Astroimaging is actually fun when everything works. But unfortunately, that is not always the case because you have to set everything up. My name is Christian Sasse and I'm based out of Kelowna in British Columbia, Canada. Very often we don't have very good weather and also there's time restriction. And the whole process of actually setting up a telescope in order to do successful astroimaging can be quite tedious. I would therefore like to show you some new exciting product and it's called the Star Sense Autoguider from Celestron. You see that small telescope here with a computer integrated that is connected to the rear of my optical tube. So what I have here is a RASA 8 that is an 8 inch telescope and right in front there is an astroimaging camera. Very often your astroimaging camera is actually positioned at the back. So the whole telescope is fastened to a mount and those are the motors that compensate for the Earth's rotation. So how does all this work and why is the StarSense Autoguider so incredibly simple to use? I'm just going to switch on the mount and show this to you. So the StarSense Autoguider is connected via a cable that is supplied to the auxiliary port of the telescope mount, the CGX in this case. On the other auxiliary port I have connected a GPS from Celestron and that just makes it so much easier because I don't have to use the hand control which is illuminated right now in order to type in my time and date and location. So let's get to it now. I'm going to just look at the hand control and follow the instructions. So I'm just going to press enter and now it wants to home. So I'm going to press enter again. And what it's doing at the moment is it's going to its position of origin. And that's where we start off with. All telescopes that are mounted equatorial, so that they are aligned with the Earth's axis, that we call an equatorial mount, need to have a certain home position. In some telescopes, it's not possible to do that automatically. And in that case, you will have to align them with the markers on the specific axis. So let's get to it now. And it's asking us, do we actually want to do polar alignment? So I'm going to say yes. So I press the align button. So let me quickly explain to you what polar alignment is all about. Well, because the whole, the Earth is actually rotating, the sky is rotating or the celestial sphere is also rotating. And in order to compensate for the Earth's rotation, we need to align the axis of the telescope with the Earth's axis, they go then in parallel. Once that is done, it's very easy for the motors of the mount to make the tracking very accurate and we don't get any star trails. That is called polar alignment. So let's do that and let's align the telescope right now. The GPS in meantime has synced its coordinates with the mount, so we should now be ready to go. So it's now asking us to move the telescope to a clear position in the sky, I recommend to position it fairly high. So I'm going to do that. I'm first going to press the down arrow on the declination. And in my case, the eastern side is quite free. So you have to determine where your sky is quite clear. And now I'm going to move the right ascension axis. That is the axis that compensates for the Earth's rotation. And position the telescope to look fairly high towards the zenith. That should be about right. It's pointing fairly high up. And now I'm just going to wait for it to settle and then press enter. And now the star sense auto guide is doing all the magic. So it's now looking and identifying through pattern recognition its portion of the sky and matching it with the internal database and by doing that it is determining what the polar alignment error is and then it's going to give us very simple instructions in order to correct for this error so that we can then start with astroimaging. So it's completed that and now it says adjust the azimuth. So I'm just going to press the enter key here and we have to wait a moment. And here we are. So we have an error of zero degrees, 41 arc minutes. So 40 arc minutes, 41 arc minutes is a bit much. So it should go down to about five arc minutes. So let's do that. I'm going to just correct the azimuth by loosening these two screws here, the horizontal screws. I'm going to loosen the left screw and just tighten 
the right screw and thereby rotating in the horizontal position. And now I'm going to look back at the error and see what has happened now if it has improved. So let's read the display. And we are now at 20 arc minutes, so we're doing it in the right way. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to tighten the right knob a little bit more and look at the error again. And now we're already within 13 arc minutes, so let's do it once more. And just loosen the other screw a bit. And thereby we're moving it horizontally. And now we're down to about 9 and a bit more. And that seems very good. Now we're within arc minutes, so that's less than five arc minutes. So we are happy with that, and I'm going to, going to press the Enter key. And now it says, let's do the adjustment of the altitude, press Enter again. And the altitude already is within very good precision, so we're within, within one arc minute. So if you have to do that, you will just do exactly the same as I have done with the azimuth. The, you adjust the vertical screws until you have the error less than about five arc minutes. So when we're finished, we just press the Enter key again. So now it's asking, do we want to do fine adjustment? In this case, I'm going to say, no, it's not necessary. So I'm just going to press the down arrow key here and press Enter. And that completes the polar alignment. That was quite easy, wasn't it? So the next step is just the auto alignment. I'm going to press Enter and explain to you what this is all about. So, auto alignment is the final process that is required so that the telescope can do accurate pointing. So what it's doing now, it's going to take a few reference points, usually three to four reference points, in the celestial sphere and map them with the internal database. By doing that, it'll be able to calibrate the internal database much better and thereby enable you to completely and precisely center any target in the sky. And that makes it very easy for astroimaging. So you don't really have to do anything here. Now, if you don't have that much uh, freedom of space up there as I have right now, and your, your view is more blocked, you can also do this whole process manually. So I won't demonstrate how that is, but it usually is enough to take one or two reference points. And because the StarSense Auto Guider also has an inbuilt precise go to, it will usually be able to correct the error anyway and center your target. So let's just wait until this completes. So it's just gone to the northwest, it's gone to the southwest, and now it's going to the east. And once it's done all that, the alignment process is completed. And what's so much fun is, this went extremely fast and was so easy to do. And then we can start astroimaging. There's only one final step that we may have to do, and that's called center calibration. Center calibration is just aligning the axis of the StarSense Auto Guider with the main axis where your camera sits on. If they are completely aligned, that means that the center of the field of view of the Auto Guider matches the center field of view of your camera right, so that you're always dead center. And there's usually an offset, and that's what center calibration will do. So let's have a look at the display. So it says now, do you want to do center calibration? So in this case, we won't do it, because I will leave that for a future video. So in this case, I'm just going to press the backspace, and the process will thereby be completed, because it's just doing a calibration right now, and thereby we are finished. I hope you found that as easy and fun and as exciting as I did because, my goodness, now we can go out and finally use telescopes again and it's made it so much easier. So in the next video then I will explain how the StarSense Auto Guider does wonderful guiding and makes astroimaging so much easier because for the guiding process actually we will not need a computer anymore. You may still need a computer for your imaging camera, depending on the model you have, but the main difficulty of all the guiding and so on is taken care of with the StarSense Auto Guider. On that note, have clear skies and enjoy it. Thank you.